Hey guys, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're in Berlin, Germany at the Holy Grail Guitar Show talking to Adriano from Ergon Guitars in Portugal. In Portugal, Lisbon, yes. Sweet. This is your second appearance at the show? I can't my remember. Third one. Third, no. third one, yes. yes. Congratulations. Actually, my first one was three years ago. was actually my first time exhibiting in any show ever. So you brought two guitars for Tomas to play, right? What's this one called? Okay, that one calls Coimbra. It's the name of a city in Portugal. Actually, all my guitars have names of Portuguese cities. And Coimbra is um, it's, uh, one of the oldest um, university cities in Europe. And um, usually it's full of letters and things, you know, stamped there. Um, and it's a mix between two guitars I have, which is the Porto, which is the top of horn, and the Lisboa, which is the other guitar I have here, actually. So I melt them together. And uh, I use different kinds of woods. I have a sliding, a sliding dovetail a neck, very wide, actually. And uh, sometimes it's all also on the neck. Sometimes it's not. Depends the kind of sound I want. It's a very, very hard hollow guitar. It's very, no, it's not chamber. It's very hollow. And there is a decay between the top and the back wood where the studs of the bridge sit. So it's a kind of a... Acoustic sound, it's a melt between acoustic and electric. So it's sound. hollow all through here? Wow. It's hollow all through there, yes. This is all incredibly way. unique and intricate. And so I'm curious, how long have you been doing this? Like that takes some serious craftsmanship. Okay. Especially for a guy who we found out before the video used to tech for Anthrax and Ozzy Osbourne and uh, who else did you say? Type of negative, Limp Biscuits, uh, uh, and a lot of European bands, like a lot, a lot, a lot. From so when, did, when did you start building guitars? I built my first guitar, actually my first body when I was 19 years old. I'm 52, I will turn 52 in December. Uh, and my first amp also, because I didn't have money, I went to play bass, and uh, somebody gave me a neck, and I built it. After that, you know, I play, I play. I was a professional session player in Portugal bass. Uh, I didn't like that much what I was doing. I don't think I was good enough as a bass player, actually. But I still like music and play music. I decided to be start a career as guitar tech, and I started in Portugal. And then, you know, I went for out of Portugal and I worked for 18 years, 19 years. We and I quit recently, like one year ago, and just building guitars. I've been working with guitars more than 20 years. I have the guitar workshop, uh, repairing workshop in London and another in Lisbon called Guitar Rehab, if I can say that. Guitar Rehab Lisbon, Guitar Rehab London. And um, so I've been like, like like thousands of fret jobs and very fretting, building necks. Ergon guitars, when I decide, I was tired to repair guitars, I decide to actually build guitars. And that happened because customers of mine wants to have a custom guitar and I tell one of them and told me, you know what, the guitar you want, maybe there's that guy, which is black guitar, black guitars, that guy will build what you want. And I give him the contact, he spoke with him. That was then it took too long and the guy told me, you know what, I want you to build my first guitar. And I said, okay, that's fine. Um I don't know how long it's gonna take. Uh when how long ago was this? Uh that was uh eight years ago. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. He wait four years actually <laughs> <laughs> with a down payment and I built my first guitar like my first concept guitar right I never did any copies anything but I built necks and bodies you know on the repair department and at the same time touring all the time uh, so I built my first guitar and I met Andy Manson actually and I show him because Andy Manson lives in Portugal uh, and I showed him my first guitar and I said oh that's nice and I built my second one and um, the guy said, oh, that's nice, you have something, you should go to Holy Grail Guitar Show. And um, I said, man, I just built three guitars. Um, so this is about four years ago? And it was like, uh, at that time, five years ago, like yeah, five, four. Um, so I, were those, sorry to interrupt, were those guitars sort of like this yes, at all? Yes, always, 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 always. No, I start like that. You didn't start simple. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Um, no, because you know, I work with wood since I was a kid. Um, because my father, my parents, they give me a toolbox, like a real toolbox, but small. And when I was six years old, and uh, I remember that was Christmas time because my birthday is in Christmas. And I remember to see a chunk of wood. I was living in France, actually, in Paris. And I said, I'm going to make a boat out of it. And I still have some tools of that. So I never finished it. So I've been working with wood, and I love to work with wood. Uh, so I did my second guitar and my third guitar, and then I applied for, for the Holy Grail show. I actually came here the year before just to see you know, if I fit here, if I was good enough. And uh, you know, I've been following uh, all my heroes, actually, Wooly Teufel, Pajelis, Spalt, 
Vancouver, Rokangas, you know, Ken Parker, Mitsu Matsuda. So I've been following all their work. Then I apply, and uh, actually, when you have to play how many guitars you make a year, it's like, oh, I cannot tell three. <laughs> uh, so the guy, no, six, because I'm, I was sure I will make six high at orders already in all night. Uh, so you lied. No, I show a different truth, you know. You know <laughs> because the question is, how many guitars you build a year? I, I knew I will build six guitars in that year, so yeah, I'll build six <laughs> guitars a year. How many guitars will you build in a year? Yeah, you know, it's my, I'm Portuguese, my English is not that good, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I don't speak English. <laughs> anyway, um, so I apply, you know, I did a website and everything, and I came here, and I had a very good reception, actually. You had a, accepted that first time? Yes, yes. So, uh, you, so you had been working on guitars for a long time, but when you got accepted to the Holy Grail Guitar Show, you had only built three of your own guitars. That's incredible. I think I was building my fourth one at the time, yeah. There has to be some kind of record. Yeah. I bet there's no one else who has come here who has uh, only built that many yeah. of their own. Michael Spaltz told me yesterday, I think, he's like, um, you know, you are like everybody, just a bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 52 years old, you know, and I've been working with guitars and musicians for 20 years on the road. Yeah. You know, I have a good relationship with you know, big brands, you know, ESP. I designed uh, some guitars for ESP also. And I had the chance to hear the sound of choices I made by big companies, you know, and that helps me a lot. And I'm a musician too. You know, I play. I don't play guitar. I play terrible, terribly. But the bass, I can do something. And stand-up bass and Chapman stick also. So, um, so I was really well accepted. And um, I had my first order when I came to Holy Grail Guitar Show. I sold uh, almost everything. Yes, almost everything. Probably everything. Then I applied for the second year, and um, I've been accepted by my masters actually very well actually. And um, actually, me, um, Uli Teufel, Claudio and Claudio Pagelli, Nick Uber, and Michael Spalt, we, that's going to be a secret, it's going to be present to the public in September. We're going to build, each one of us going to build a guitar out of wood I found in Portugal with 300 years old barrel wood. It's mahogany, actually. Uh, we have six tons of it, which belongs to the first prime minister of Portugal, the guy who rebuilt the the. Lisbon after a big earthquake when it was totally clean and I found the barrels of the wood uh, by accident and I have it they are huge they are you know, two meters high seven centimeters deep they're thick and like board so we're gonna design a new guitar each one of us will call Carcavelos which is the name of the vineyard which is a protected by the vineyard thingy I don't know, eh? <laughs> and we have their support so yeah certainly I'm working with my heroes and um and I'm well, well accepted. I quit touring, just trusting what I'm doing. That's really cool. What a cool story. I could probably talk about it all day, but should we get back to this guitar? Um, so it's hollow, uh, and it's is it a, like one piece on the front and then a middle piece and then the back? Or That's correct. That's red cedar from Canada on the top, which is a book matched, open book matched. It's red, uh, Spanish cedar from the back, uh, you know, just one piece. Spanish cedar neck also. Actually, not the Honduras mahogany. That one, so I'm, I'm mixed up. Yes, there we go. And then, did you say on the body is there a middle sandwich piece or there just two pieces? There's a middle, one piece. It's like front and top and back. That's oh, it. Okay. Then I have a long tenon dovetail slide in, which on that one is not hollow the the, the neck, but on the other one it is. That's also the mahogany from the neck. Right? That's correct. That's and it's a dovetail slide in. I use um, old drum cymbals for the tailpiece and all the metal parts, the covers. Um, the bridge is a brass bridge, which I don't remember the brand. I buy it on Guitar Fetish actually. Pickups, IZ pickups. Uh, they are from Israel. Uh, it's no pa no no. Pa My guitars don't have any plastic any chemicals, everything is just natural. And it's just a coil on paper and a neodymium magnets. It's a staggered unbucker. So I have a rail on the bass strings closer to the bridge and a rail on the high strings closer to the neck on both pickups. Two volumes, one tone, and uh, you know, switch. Uh, Indian rosewood neck, fretboard, Evergold um, frets, and I use frets as dot markers. 
Oh, that, oh, that's cool. This is a profile yeah, cut. It's a fretboard, so as wooden frets. <laughs> all of, let's see, there's zero frets I have. And, you know, all the carving. You know, there's a reason for my headstocks being like that. It's not a, just an aesthetical thing. I it's couldn't a, blame you if it was just aesthetics because it, it, it looks so cool. Thank you. That is, I like to melt shapes. I, you know, I like sculpture a lot. I like Gaudi. Um, that's one of my big influence. And my bodies are like that because I feel... I, I don't feel comf comfortable with a flat surface against my belly for three or through two hours where uh -huh. I'm playing. And I try to do that to as, as much comfortable and more ergon um, organic, actually, and ergonomic possible. It's very cool. Even the truss rod cover, that's wood, right? Everything is wood, yes. Wood for the same guitar, yes. Even Can the, we the, the tip from the switch also. Nice. Can we see the back of the, the, the volute? Or that's like... Yeah, that's the volute, um, you know. Every guitar I do is different from the previous one. Actually, every guitar I do is uh, it's an evolution of the previous one. And when I do things and I start to do the guitar, I start to see already the, the next one. And I don't I don't make two guitars the same. So if you see two organs the same, one one of them will be a copy. And I, I don't even copy myself. I don't like when people copy things because I think intellectual property as as a property and people should respect that. I don't mind if people use my ideas, but at least they should tell, like, I have that idea because of that. And make it better and things like that. Yeah. I, and that's one of my strongest points, actually. Cool. Should we have Tomas play a couple other pickup selections and maybe with different pedals or whatever? Whatever you feel like, Tomas. All right. So we'll start with uh, the neck pickup, okay. which I feel I really like neck pickups. They're full and, yeah, we'll just do some clean things. <laughs> They're very full, they're very dynamic, um, which is something I can show you a little bit. Um, they respond very well to pick attack, so you can play extremely hard and they stay musical and you can play really, really softly and they retain that sort of clarity. So if I play something kind of finger picked, very, very lightly, I can go up in dynamic. range is quite big, right? That is. And you can feel that even if you play just a, if, uh, chords, you know? It's just, yeah, you have a huge range to play around with. Um, so that's both pickups together. Enough sustain to do whatever you need, pretty much. And then bridge. Adriano, what's this one called? That one calls Lisboa, which is like the main city in Portugal, mm -hmm. uh, the capital. And um, it's Lisboa, it's, um, I have red cedar on the top, the same thing as the Coimbra, but I use red ce Spanish cedar in the back, black wood from Mozambique fretboard, the same, you know, the dovetail sliding, the same thing, the same the, the tailor piece, the same bridge. The electronic is a bit not the same because actually that one was a custom order, so I have a pan between between the pickups, I have a split coil, which is a tone knob also, and I have an out of in phase switch. Uh, the back of the guitar, the neck actually, it's Douglas fir from Oregon. Oregon. That's beautiful. I bought it ten years ago. I was I never <coughs> seen nothing like that. I was like, wow, that's beautiful. But then after a while, I was like, oh, I'm concerned about that because that's going to be moving all over the place. So it's been there for ten years. And I decide to go for it. You know, I have the neck joints the, the same way. I liked the 
the excess from the last frets, and it's a match also with the volute from the, the fretboard, uh, the, the, the headstock, which is also a comfort zone when you go to the end of the neck. And um, yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. The pickups are not the same. Uh, it's from IZ pickups also, but they are full humbuckers, this one. And there's a split coil. And, um, are they also a neodymium, <laughs> neodymium yeah, magnet? Yeah, 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 yeah. The same thing is just, it's two bars, two coils on each one, uh, full strings, you know. Behind the wood, uh, there is two bars there, which uh, Thomas can show them where they are. No, here, no, no, not the pickups. My finger is going here. There's one here, one here, one here, one there. One more thing. This one has these cool vents, oh, right? Is it yeah. similar construction in this body to the other one? Yes, yes. It's exactly the same thing, same option approach. It just has some, you know, it's some, it's not air folds, but some sound holes you can actually hear it coming out. And I have other options on other models also, that these holes come in from other places. It's a bit more alive, that one, I think. Uh, meant less compressed than the other one, but to keep the pickups, right, because they are different, they actually balance a bit. Things. I think the best thing is just to hear them. I have to ask one more question. How, is how much of this is done like CNC, and how much is with hand? Do you do it all by hand? Oh, by the way, it's like no plastic, no chemicals, all hand work. The only, I use a router only to do the thrust rod channel, and I have my own thrust rods actually. I don't buy, it's like a single rod, four, four millimeter stainless steel. Um, I don't make them self, myself totally, but I cannot tell where they come from because it's a secret. <laughs> I promised. Uh, and it's everything handmade. Everything handmade. It's chisels, knives, rasps, a lot of blood sometimes, you know. A lot of <laughs> is that what this finishes? Uh, there, there is some there, trust me, there is some. There is some. No, it's all handmade. Uh, I work 12 to 14 hours a day, uh, Saturdays including, and um, that takes me like four weeks to five weeks to build. Uh, of course, after the third week, I can start another guitar. It's one by one, actually. But you know, when I wait for drying, I start to do other things. But total is like five weeks, yeah. That's incredible. All right, let's have Tomas play this one. Is that the neck pickup or a blend? Or? Um, we have a lot of different sounds available here. So I'm kind of choosing... Uh, Just a couple. Yeah, yeah, a couple of things. This is basically the neck pickup, pickup in split coil. But it's a really fat split, right? Usually you get those really thin hollow splits. Um, I'll show you the difference if I put it in full humbucker. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what basically what I chose. Uh, there's the option of doing split coil, single coil, single coil out of phase, uh, humbucker out of phase. So yeah, plenty of sounds. Um, we'll have a listen to the neck, uh, sorry, to the bridge in full humbucker. And in split, I'm obviously using some tremolo. Again, similar to the other one, um, very dynamic, very open sounding. Uh, do you want to hear the out of phase? Sure. That's the. How about we have Tomas or Adriano tell us his website and you play us out on that? What's cool. The, yeah. okay, my, my website is ergonguitars.com. Ergonguitars.com or ergon.guitars also. Cool. Go check it out and then check out premierguitar.com. Later. Thank you.